Hello and welcome everyone to a new episode of All Things IDA. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about IDA Q scripts and uh, show you all most of its features, how it works. Uh, IDA Q scripts is a productivity plugin for IDA to speed up your script development, whether it's Python scripts, IDC scripts, or any other script supported by IDA. Additionally, you can do native plugin development as well using the C++ SDK and so on as we will see. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to be doing is grabbing a copy of the plugin. One way is to simply grab a pre-built version and, and install it or simply also uh, build it from sources which I can equally do. I do have all the prerequisites to be able to build it so I will simply clone it and build that IDA plugin. I do have IDA SDK installed and IDA CMake, Visual Studio, everything required uh, to build. It did build 64 and non 64. It uh, deployed it in the plugins uh, binary folder. So we, we could now run IDA SDK uh, copy and have that plugin installed. So let me run IDA open a database and now let's write a hello world script so if you open uh, any editor of your choice doesn't matter doesn't have to be this program VS code and here let's say print hello world and uh, I'm gonna save it here I'm gonna call it hello.py and that's the script now normally to execute that script in IDA, one would have to first uh, load the script through the script file. And once the script is selected, we can see it is executed. Then if you if you do any changes, and then save. Of course, you have to rerun the script. You could re redo the file uh, loading by simply reloading the script. Or you could recall all the previously loaded scripts uh, using the recent scripts window. And here we will see a list of uh, previously loaded stuff. And so we simply double click and it will uh, run. So if we're doing, uh, if you're using IDA, only IDA, without Q scripts, the workflow would be edit, save, switch to IDA, go to the recent scripts, and double click on the script. And that's what we're trying to avoid using the QScripts uh, plugin. So let's uh, invoke, instead of using the recent scripts, let's invoke QScripts. QScripts will have uh, a shortcut, Alt Shift F9, or we can invoke it from the plugins menu, also Alt Shift F9. When, when it opens, we can activate a script. So since already we see hello script already in the list, if it wasn't, we could insert it but it's already there, so all we have to do is activate it. That term in IDA script means m start monitoring this script and its dependencies. So to activate it, we simply press enter. Now the script is activated and it has been executed. And that's it. Once it's activated, we don't have to anymore run the script explicitly. All we have to do is simply switch back to the editor and uh, do the changes and, and just hit uh, save. Each time we save, the changes will be reflected. So here if we clear the screen and save, it uh, it works. Great. And so we can do anything here we want. And once we save, it will it will uh, it will work. Now let's take a quick look at the options and show you a couple of important options. So back into QScript, right click and options, or so pressing Ctrl E. Uh, important options is by default, allow QScript execution to be undoable is not selected. I did select it previously, so now it's enabled. When we enable this, we can have undo once QScript automatically executes. So if you had a destructive operation, for example, Let's say here we have a label called hello and I want to rename it. it 
to uh, testing one two three for example if I hit save you should see here the address has been changed save it, it changed now because we have undo enabled I can undo and it will undo the whole execution effect of the script so control Z and uh, it undo uh, now this is a simple scenario where we have a single script and uh, it is active now what if our script has dependencies so what if hello.py depends on another script so here for example we have script 2 script 2 has a function called say hello it is uh, also a standalone script if you wanna load it on its own so here we can try if we just activate script 2 on its own it should do nothing maybe we can print here uh, script 2 standalone and if we double click on this one it will execute it and activate it and here we can see now it's trackable so if we save script 2 is the one that will be reflected versus hello is no longer active so doing any changes here is no longer going to cause automatic execution nothing changes what if we want to keep hello and make hello depend on script 2 such as if we change anything in script 2 or hello both of them will be properly reloaded to do that we'll have to use a dependency file that's a special file understood by IDAQ script we can grab a couple templates of those files based on the scenario so in our case we're working with simple dependencies so if we navigate to the IDAQ script project in IDAQ scripts test scripts we have the basic dependency test example we can take for example one uh, depths.qscripts extension this is how the dependency files look like it's the file name the script name dot depths.qscripts if your script was an IDC it would have been like script.idc dot depths.qscripts so we took a template dependency file now we need to link it with our script so we just have to change the base name of the dependency file to match the script that we want to activate and let's take a look at what's inside that dependency file <coughs> so the first thing here it shows the a reload directive that's special syntax that whenever one of those dependency files have changed then that piece of code will execute and it will reload base name of those files so here if we have multiple dependencies let's say we have file 1 file 2 file 3 uh, these are dependencies for hello.py if any of those dependencies change or hello changes then everything will be re-executed hello will be re-executed if any of its dependencies is executed dependencies are reloaded using that syntax so that's what you need to know so in our case hello uh, one, we want it to depend on just another script called script2 so let's simplify this and just have here script2 now hello depends on script 2 let's use script 2 as well import script 2 and here let's say script 2 dot say hello if we now take a look at ida <coughs> let's first save uh, hello.py and activate hello by pressing enter or double clicking once we activate it we can see now we the first message from this script itself and here from the dependency those two messages also what we notice is whenever we have an active script the active script will have the pencil icon next to it and the dependencies will have the looking uh, eyeglasses icon if you have multiple dependencies all of the dependencies if they're in the list they will show that icon so you can tell whenever you have an active script what are the dependent scripts as well uh, that's a good visual indication so if we take script 2 and save it as script 3 change a bit and uh, change the dependency here at script 3 as well save and insert script 3 and let's activate hello we can see script 3 uh, script 2 and hello they're all related changes to any of those scripts will uh, cause proper reloading and re-execution 
So here if we also import script 3 and say script 3 to say hello, save, we got three lines. If we change inside script 3, save it, it reflects. So that's a very convenient way to develop, um, instead of writing a big script, you can break it into smaller pieces and have them nicely be picked up. The, the most important thing is reloading, otherwise uh, you would have to exit IDA and rerun IDA every time a module has been updated. And that's not necessarily good use of your time. Hence the increase in productivity when we use QScripts. So what we covered so far is basic scripting and basic dependencies. <coughs> Let's uh, talk about uh, trigger files. So instead of having Instead of having a script execute when its dependencies change, we can have it uh, work when uh, a trigger file or a temporary file is changed. So for tr trigger files, we have another example we can take a look at. So we have here a trigger file sample. Um, I'm going to make a copy of hello trigger file and change that script so it executes only when a trigger file has been changed. Or created. So uh, let's create a dependency file. So the skeleton here, I'm gonna take a trigger file example and change it. So let's rename the dependency file to match the script that we're going to activate and change the dependency file so and in, in this script itself hello trigger file we don't have any dependency so i don't need a reload directive and also i don't have any dependencies the only thing i have is i'm specifying a trigger file we call it create me dot temp this file when it's created or modified will cause that hello trigger file to be executed so let's switch back to IDAQ script and insert this script. Now, since we didn't activate it, it will not run. The first time we activate it, it, it will execute it. And that will be the last time. Even if we change this uh, script and save, nothing will happen until we create the, the dependency, the trigger file. So for this, let's create a trigger file next to it since uh, we specify the relative path. So let's make a new file and we can keep it empty so I'm just gonna hit save and create create uh, this create me.temp and the moment I save the file the new output will be reflected. So the script now has been executed and the temp file has been deleted. That's how trigger files work. Um, once they have been uh, consumed, they're deleted, unless we specify slash keep, then they're not deleted. Then the condition becomes if the file is uh, changed since the last time we checked it. So if the trigger file has been changed, then rerun the script. So for now, in our case, uh, that's a uh, good uh, enough uh, that's how we use trigger files so what i'm going to be showing you next is a trick we we can use using trigger files to actually write plugins in in, in the sdk and we can nicely build the plugins we can put the c plus plus source code on one side and ida on the other side and do the same with c plus plus the same things we would be doing from uh, python but instead of hitting save to save and then have it executed, we simply build. And the idea is, is simple. We will use the output plugin binary, the plugin DLL, as the trigger. <coughs> so to do this, also we have in the IDAQ scripts, test scripts, we have some skeletons to uh, write plugins. And let's take the plugin template. So I'm going to take a copy of plugin template from IDAQ script and uh, take a copy here, it's called plugin template. I'm gonna call it my test plugin. 
and this is a this is a regular IDA plugin. It's uh, so far it has nothing to do with Q scripts. Um, my test plugin. <coughs> let's change let's change its name as well internally. Uh, so here I'm gonna change these are these are either CMake stuff so these are things covered previously uh, okay so let's build that plugin so that's the first step to generate the project and this is to build it now I, I want to do interactive development so I don't really want to build it from the command prompt I would like to be able to switch back and forth between IDA and the IDE so let's uh, let's continue the setup here so this is the plugin it has two source files <coughs> The driver we can safely ignore is just some uh, boilerplate code. Main.cpp is where we will put most of our test logic. And we can treat this as if it was like a script, so to say, very minimal boilerplate code. We isolated the plugin code from the actual logic we want to quickly test and prototype. We even had all the other important IDA SDK includes behind the convenient IDA SDK header file. So if you want to use more header files, just add them to the IDA SDK header file. And then write your test code in main. That's a quick way to prototype in C++. So to be able to uh, build and see the changes directly in uh, an IDA, so here let's... Uh, let me take this for a second, put it somewhere else. And here, let's just say a hello, a hello world application, a hello world. And build. Of course, now it deployed the plugin, but that's, uh, that's not enough. We need to invoke the plugin. We did not really have any automatic mechanism. This is just regular de plugin development. Now, since we copied this template from IDAQ scripts, we also inherited like the default names and so on. Let me also change this to uh, my test plugin just for clarity. This is the, 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 the display name of the plugin. Okay, so this is all the customization we need to do. I will build the plugin. If, uh, if I rerun IDA, let's. Uh, what I want is to re uh, run IDA without the debugger and uh, now it should pick up the new plugin here uh, the plugin should be my test plugin and once we invoke it it will say hello world okay so now if I change change this one and build can I see the output not yet we need to do one more thing we need to connect this plugin with q scripts so uh, we need another helper script so we took our plugin c code also we need a couple of python scripts and a dependency file so also let's take this template and let's rename this python file usually we can call it the same as our plugin and that will be our adapter script so to say it will launch the actual native plugin the python script will launch the native plugin so all i did uh, take a copy change the names and now let's customize those to match our plugin name and so on so let's talk uh, what are the what is this script and why do we have a dependency file and how does the whole thing connect with q scripts so the python script we want to activate does the following the m the most important thing you can do anything you want but most importantly uh, we want to make a trigger file based on the dll output and when the trigger file runs this script that script will load and run plugin the plugin that we want it to be tested automatically so here we just have to change this to my test plugin or whatever you called your plugin what the plugin output name would be so here 
that's the plugin and we could programmatically uh, load and run the plugin so I want a way to basically build generate a new DLL have IDA automatically issue a load and run plugin and that's where we are we can basically use QScripts and we tell QScripts to load and run plugin so save this script and let's also take a look at the dependency file because we need the trigger file mechanism as well so we open this and uh, in the trigger file now we do specify slash keep and the trigger file is the environment variable ida sdk now if you have ida cmake already installed correctly it requires you to have an ida sdk com environment variable so if you have ida cmake you already set it up if not you just simply you can hard code a long pass but that's cleaner way we're simply saying wherever the sdk is bin plugin and uh, here the plugin name is not correct so as we said we want the plugin to be matching the output binary so this one so we simply change the trigger file name the ext variable simply means either uh, .so dylib uh, 64.dll and so on so this is a generic way to capture the full output uh, a pass <coughs> based on the IDA that runs that script so that's that's good enough the only change is just the name that we want to uh, adjust so that's our support script so now we have a native native C++ code and QScript Python that will be triggering it so let's now activate the helper script for it so open QScript and what we want for the native plugin here is its helper script so this one and we activate it so once we activate it it should load and run that plugin that DLL and we should see this message so let's run it uh, activate that script uh, probably I did not build yet let me build yes I did not build now once I built it it is picked up okay so now now we can basically start to do things uh, as well like any any a API call anything we want so here for example now let's uh, load the proper database that's uh, that's a database with functions and let me bring back the code I pasted so for example let's say I'm prototyping or learning how to enumerate functions I see this code is good enough get function quantity get function name for every function so n funks get function at index i get the function name display the address the start of the function and the name of the function so that's a, for example a nice uh, useful script we can be testing so all I have to do is simply build but double check that we have uh, since we reloaded the new database probably we lost the active script so I'm gonna reopen QScript uh, it is still uh, active so let's uh, simply rebuild this one and see what happens here here it is still being used uh, when I downloads it's still using the plugin let's see fail to open the plugin that's a common scenario that's fine uh, we reloaded IDA we reloaded a new database we simply have to reactivate the script even though it is activated okay now this forced IDA to release the plugin now we can rebuild and rewrite a new DLL which will be picked up so now this code will be executed after the build happens and the uh, build succeeded the DLL has been emitted and automatically the message uh, the, the things here took place this basically covers uh, the majority of IDAQ scripts all right thank you very much and uh, see you next time